you're going to want to sit back and relax because I'm going to talk about some things that are very obvious to, to me as somebody who's been around a long time and lived through them, and I think less obvious to other people. Take a look at this right here. Coming 1995, software currently in development with Namco, Konami, Capcom, Bandai, Jalico. Read those names on and on and on. Where do you think the money came from to develop the PlayStation 1? Where do you think the money came from to go out and talk to third-party developers and get content timed or exclusive for the PlayStation 1 in order to allow that PlayStation 1 to become successful in a market that Sony had never been in before? The money didn't come from gaming. It came from outside gaming. It came from the money they made in the consumer electronics divisions, TVs, cameras, the Walkman. They leveraged that success outside of gaming to buy success in gaming. It wasn't insured, but they used it to create the PlayStation 1, and then they used it to go around and talk to people to get them to use the system to get content and to lock down exclusives. I've been seeing a lot of talk about Microsoft using money that had nothing to do with gaming to buy influence and success in gaming, and somehow that's a bad thing. Now, either the people who are saying this are young, and I understand not living through this thing, the PlayStation 1, or going back as far as the Odyssey and the Atari, and the Atari, but this is what every company does. Sony did this, Nintendo did this. The issue is that Microsoft took forever to do it, and they're doing it now, when they should have done it 20 years ago. Now, before we really get going, I wanna say that I am not a fan of what's going on, and I think objectively, Sony's first party games are light years ahead of most other people, including Microsoft's. I enjoy the style of games that they make, and I think they are second to none. However, I think that this is an unfair critique levied at Microsoft and Xbox. And again, the reason is we are living through what Sony did a long time ago and what Nintendo did a long time ago. The difference is they did it a long time ago. We're living through what they did now and we're seeing it through the eyes of Microsoft doing it and we're being very harsh and critical. Again, Sony had no presence in gaming whatsoever. Where did their money come from to gain influence in gaming? Where did the money come from to create the PlayStation 1? It came from outside of gaming. Nintendo, after the crash, they didn't have a presence in video games in the console market. Where did the money come from for Nintendo to do that? They've had tons of businesses outside of gaming. Hanafuda cards, love motels even in Japan. Here's something else. Nintendo's dominance was bought and paid for. They had a clause for third parties because they were so successful and they had such a large portion of the gaming market, over 80, almost 90% sewn up. They had a clause that said any third party that was making a game on the NES had to only make that game on the NES. So essentially, if you're a third party and you have an idea and you want to put it on the Nintendo Entertainment System, it has to stay there. It can't go anywhere else. That's the kind of leverage. That's the kind of dominance. Those are the kind of practices that were going on a very long time ago. But we're seeing them now. We're living through them now through the eyes of Microsoft because they didn't do it when they should have done it 20 years ago. So this idea that somehow they're less noble in the way they're doing things is really disingenuous because everyone's done it like this. Trust me when I tell you, there were plenty of people thinking and feeling the same thing when Final Fantasy decided to go exclusive on the PlayStation 1. And the reasonings were, well, they have a CD-based format and our game can't really fit, our vision can't really fit on the cartridges that Nintendo is going with. That partly was the reason. But a big reason was money and leverage. We've got this CD format. How can we use that to leverage, to give us an advantage over a competitor th that they don't have? And if we were living through that now, I'm sure people would be screaming, it's unfair. Why are they doing it? 
They're using their power outside of gaming to gain influence in gaming and success. So I gotta be honest with you. It's not a fair critique to levy at Microsoft. I'm not saying what they're doing is great. I don't know the ramifications of buying up huge publishers who have always made games on every platform. However, this one singular critique levied at them is just coming from people who don't have the insight, haven't lived through all of these generations, or they have, and they're just interested in driving hits and subscribers and saying things that are very hyperbolic around consoles to drive their own success in YouTube. And I'm not really interested in doing that. Now, again, I wanna be clear. I'm not saying I agree with any of this and I like Sony's approach because their games have a quality that I'm looking for. And I haven't seen that quality on Xbox in a long time. I think Halo was okay. It's a step in the right direction. Forza's Forza, but I wanna see new content. That's what they're missing, the creativity side of gaming. They haven't created anything culturally relevant in gaming, but it is an unfair critique to say that they're just this company with a lot of money and they're buying their way into gaming. If they had done the work 20 years ago like Sony did and Nintendo did, we wouldn't be having this conversation, but it still would be relevant because they both, Sony and Nintendo, did the same thing. They both used money from outside of gaming to get into gaming. They both, they both used strengths that they had in consumer electronics or other markets to gain influence in gaming and gain an advantage and become successful. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. These are the facts, it happens, but I don't think that what Microsoft is doing is necessarily different from what Sony and Nintendo do. The difference is the options that they have are much larger because they've got more money and Sony and Nintendo would have done and would do the exact same thing. Thanks for watching. Think about liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.